reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On that day, they will sing this song in the land of Judah. A strong city we have. He sets up walls and ramparts to protect us. Open up the gates to let in a nation that is just, one that keeps faith, nation, a nation of firm purpose you keep in peace, in peace, for it trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord is an eternal rock. He humbles those in high places, and the lofty cities he brings down. He tumbles it to the ground, levels it with the dust. It is trampled underfoot by the needy, by the footsteps of the poor. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than, than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Open to me the gates of justice. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This gate is the Lord's. The just shall enter it. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me and have been my savior. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Lord, grant salvation. O Lord, grant prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God and he has given us light. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Well, everyone, it's Wednesday, December 1st, a new month, and the gospel is from Matthew. At that time, Jesus walked by the Sea of Galilee, went up on the mountain, and sat down there. Great crowds came to him, having with them the lame, the blind, the deformed, the mute, and many, many others. They placed them at his feet, and he cured them. The crowds were amazed when they, they saw the mute speaking, the deformed made whole, um, the lame walking and the blind able to see. And they glorified the God of Israel. Jesus summoned his disciples and said to them, my heart is moved with pity for the crowd, for they have been with me now for, for three days and have nothing to eat. I do not want to send them away hungry for fear that they may collapse on the way. The disciples said to him, where could we ever get enough bread in, in this deserted place to satisfy such an enormous crowd? Jesus said to them, how many loaves do you have? Seven, they replied, and a few fish. He ordered the crowd to sit down on the ground. Then he took the seven loaves and the fish, gave thanks, broke the loaves, and gave them to the disciples who in turn gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied. They picked up the fragments left over, seven baskets full. The gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I always think about this as uh, Jesus the caterer. You know, here we have all these people out in the middle of nowhere and they have, they have no food to eat. It, it speaks to us of the importance that when we do things that are charitable, we do it for the whole person. It says at the very beginning that he cured the lame, he cured the blind, he, claimed, he cured the deformed, um, the mute. All, he, he took care of their, their physical deficits, and then on top of everything else, he gave, them, he gave them lunch, dinner, whatever time of the day it happened to be, because he knew that they needed that as well. Jesus doesn't leave anything to chance. He takes care of the whole person. And, and we should take that as a reminder <clears throat> that we too are called to make sure that, that when we minister to other people, remember I talked about discipleship yesterday? Discipleship is about the whole person, not just, not just taking care of this tiny little need or that tiny little need. We have to raise people up in, in a wholeness of attitude of charity. And you, you, you know, it's, um, it's the old story about, you know, if you give someone a fish, 
or you give someone a meal, then you'll keep giving them meals. But if you give them a job and you, you teach them how to fish and you raise them up in dignity uh, and pride of place, that's a whole different story. That's why Catholic Charities is so very successful. You raise people up in wholeness of mind, body, and soul, and that's what Christ was doing. My friends, this is Christmas around the corner, the season of giving. Many of you will be doing that for others. Remember, you glorify God by charity toward others, not just for the, 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 the single infirmity, but making people whole again and giving them back their lives. Take care and I'll see you tomorrow. Now, my friends, as we have shared the word of God together, I invite you to spend time with me in front of the Blessed Sacrament as we share our spiritual prayer of communion. My friends, we now invite you to spend some time in adoration before the Blessed Sacrament in the Tabernacle. We usually uh, follow up my reflections and my, um, my gospel reflections with this time. And uh, so often I will say to you, uh, pray and reflect on a psalm or on some of the words of the gospel, something Jesus says, or a parable. This is a great time to do that. And so join me now as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And my friends, as you spend time before the Lord, may he bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Enjoy these moments of private prayer and reflection.